A few months ago, I uploaded a video about my friend's very tiny Paris apartment. That's 9 square meters and 750 euros a month in rent. And that video blew up. It's got more than 800,000 views as of now and thousands of comments. But what's super interesting is that the comment section is super divided. Some people are really happy for Vikram and his positivity about living in that apartment. And others are completely baffled that such a small space costs so much and that the landlord is completely scamming him and he's better off living somewhere else, maybe in the outskirts. In this video, I'm going to address those points and especially the ones that are concerned about the situation. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts on living in such a small apartment, what I think about the price and whether it's worth it. So let's first talk about living in such a tiny apartment. It's pretty clear the apartment is really, really small. And to make matters worse, the toilet is in the corridor and it's shared by one other apartment and the shower is inside the apartment with like an open ceiling. Personally for me, I could do a small apartment, but I feel like the shower being inside the apartment is a bit of a deal breaker because I think it's just a bit of a hazard. In case there's a leak, it could cause a lot of problems inside the rest of the apartment. The shared toilet, I think, sounds bad, but I think it would actually be okay because it's only shared with one other apartment and I think I'm not even going to be responsible for cleaning it because there's somebody else to clean the toilet. So I actually think it's not such a bad situation to share the toilet. If you think about it, as a student, it's super common to live with a shared bathroom. And considering that most people who live in such apartments are students, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, when you're a student or an intern, basically you're on a budget and your option is to either live in a really tiny apartment like that or to live in an apartment where you're sharing it with two, three, four, or even five other people. When I lived in Los Angeles in 2019 as an intern, I didn't have a lot of money. And so I shared an apartment with four other people and it was a two bedroom apartment. So there was like two people in one room, two people in another room and one person in the living room. And I was paying 750 US dollars for that apartment. Sure, it was a fantastic location, which is why I like living there. But after a point, I absolutely hated coming back home to a place where I wasn't sure what state I would find it in because there was like four other people there. So if I was in that situation and I had to choose between sharing an apartment with four others or having a really tiny apartment, which is like all mine, I think I would choose the really tiny apartment, which was all mine. But I think that's just me. I just, I like the privacy of having my own space. And I like knowing that when I come back home, no one's gonna have moved something somewhere or no one's gonna have a party without me knowing. And yeah, I just prefer having my own space, even if it's smaller. One more thing to remember is that when you're living in an apartment like that, or even if you're sharing it with four other people, like I was in LA, it's not a permanent situation. It's just for six months, nine months, or a year at max, usually. And when you're a student or an intern, you're also out of the house most of the time and you pretty much only come back home to sleep. And so living in such a small apartment or living in a shared apartment is not the worst thing. Personally, I think it's a great way to build character and I think it's a great story to tell people later on in life. Like when I think about my time in Los Angeles with four other people, do I regret it? Absolutely not. Would I do it again? Also no. I think one time was enough. So yeah, I think for all the people who are commenting that why did he choose to leave India? Why did he like come to a Western country just to live like that? Guys, it's just for a temporary period of time. It's just when you're a student. And if you have to make it in another country, you're not gonna expect the same quality of life that you're used to when you're living with your parents back home in India, especially not as a student. There were also a lot of comments about 750 euros being really, really expensive for that apartment. Let's talk about that. Firstly, I would remove around 50 to 70 euros from that figure because it includes heating, electricity and Wi-Fi. So let's make the rent actually 700 euros, not 750. Now, is 700 euros worth it for a 9 square meter apartment in Paris? The answer to that question is actually not so simple. There are a couple of things to consider. Firstly, it's really, really hard to find an apartment in Paris, period, for anyone. The supply is kind of limited and the demand is really quite high, especially at the low end of the spectrum for students and people on a budget. There are way too many people who are looking for apartments and very, very few apartments to give out. And so the competition to get an apartment is really high and that drives drives landlords to increase the prices of apartments. Secondly, as an international student or as a foreigner, it's even harder to get an apartment. And this is because most French landlords require a guarantor that is French. Now, a guarantor is someone who agrees to pay your rent in the event that you default on your rent payment. And most landlords take this super seriously because the French law protects tenants a lot. 
so they don't want to take someone in and then they stop paying their rent and then there's no way for them to recover their rent and they can't kick them out either and they're in a big problem so they take this stuff very very seriously when you're an international student one you don't have a job so you don't have a source of income and two you don't have a french guarantor because your parents are not in France because that's those are the people who you usually ask to be your guarantor. Parents or close relatives, basically. And so when you're an international student, it's even harder to find an apartment. As an example, when I was in my gap year and I was trying to find a place to stay in Paris for my internship, it was super hard. Most landlords would not even look at my application. And so then I eventually ended up getting a student residence and I was paying something like 760 euros a month for an 18 square meter apartment. And that apartment or like that studio was way in the outskirts of the city like it took me almost 45 minutes to an hour to get to the city every time and that was super annoying because if I wanted to stay out late at night I had to basically I, I, take an uber back home or take like one of those late night buses which wasn't always the best situation it was just super annoying so yeah you can understand that like there is definitely a huge plus to staying in Paris being on a budget and being an international student or a foreigner it's just really hard and that's why the price is quite a lot we might think that landlords are taking advantage, but at the end of the day, I think it's just supply and demand. There's just way too much demand and not enough supply. Now, it is possible to get a larger apartment for the same price, yes, but it's gonna take a lot of time to find that apartment. You may need a lot of documents. You may need to get really lucky because there's usually like four or five people applying to one apartment, if not more, and you need to be the one that gets chosen. And landlords usually wanna take people who have a job rather than who are students. And so, yeah, sure, it is quite, hard to get a better deal it is possible but it's hard to get a better deal and living in the outskirts is a bit annoying as well especially when you're a student because then you have to like travel so long to get to to get to class and you can't stay out as much so yeah it's just a problem like for example the apartment that i live in right now it's 32 square meters and i'm paying 1050 euros which is just like 300 euros more than what vikram is paying but it's almost four times the size but i was able to only get this because i have a job and that makes a huge difference. So the question really is, is it worth it to pay 750 euros a month for a nine square meter apartment in Paris? The answer to that is, it depends on the amount of time you decide to stay in the apartment. If you end up living there for four years, then absolutely no, it's not worth it. Because if you're there four years, you probably had the time to look for another apartment, which was a better deal. If you look long enough, you will find one. And it's for that reason why most people living in such tiny apartments, they just stay there for a very short period of time. But if you're gonna be in Paris only for one semester or two semesters maybe one and a half years i think it makes a lot of sense i think it's worth it to like pay a little bit extra for like an easy to get place to live because as i mentioned before it's really quite hard as an international student to find an apartment in paris if you're comfortable there and you don't mind paying the rent like in vikram's case for example i don't think it's the worst idea because to find another apartment in paris it's a lot of work and then moving all your stuff is a lot of work and you're a student you're there to study and so i think you don't want to get into all of that stuff. Another situation where this might be worth it is that if you just use it as your first apartment, as like a crash pad to basically buy yourself some time and stability so that you could find a next apartment in Paris, which is a better deal. Yeah, it makes sense as well. But essentially the crux of it is that if you stay there for a short period of time for a specific purpose, I think it's totally worth it because it saves you the hassle of struggling to find an apartment. But if you're gonna be staying there for like a long period of time, it's definitely not worth it because there's better options out there. They just take time and energy and effort to get. So yeah, I hope this video clears up some of the confusion that you might have about living in such a tiny apartment and why it costs so much and whether it's worth it to spend the money to live in that apartment or not. I think a lot of people who are commenting in that video think that he's staying there as a permanent situation, but no, it's not the case. In fact, Vikram's already moved out. So yeah, there you go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you want to see more videos, like this one or other apartment tours in Paris or other videos about life in Paris as an expat, hit that subscribe button because I'll be uploading more videos every single week. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.